What drew me to Madagascar was Blue Ventures. So Blue Ventures were already established in Madagascar doing excellent community-based marine conservation work. And I arrived when they were already doing that work. I was really impressed with the quality of work they were doing, their commitment to the region, and just their ethos for, for working. And I thought, well, I'm passionate about marine conservation. This is the sort of work I want to be doing. So I kind of offered my services to them. My name is Vic Mohan. I'm a practicing doctor in the UK, and I'm the medical director to Blue Ventures Conservation. When we first started, we were offering, offering services in one village, one clinic, once a week. And, um, and that expanded, and now through a program of outreach clinics in 10 villages and through having a team of 33 community health workers, or we call them community-based distributors, CBDs. Now, as a result of having this team of 33 CBDs and a clinician doing outreach work, we offer services for 40 villages. And because we had such good relationships with the community at the beginning, because we were able to basically meet a need that the community had asked us to support them with, and because we could do that in a way that respected them and their, their wishes and, you know, it was a rights-based approach and it was culturally sensitive, you know, the uptake was really, really rapid. So, you know, on the very first day, 20% of all women of reproductive age came asking for contraception. That was the very first day we started. And, I, and that, to me, feels pretty unprecedented. You know, so it's really exciting. And, and the story ever since then has been the same. People have come to us because we offer them a service that they need and because they trust us to do that. Six years on, you know, we can, we can proudly say that we've made a real impact as an organization providing healthcare. When we started, the proportion of women of reproductive age using contraception was 10% or less. Now it's around 55%. Then the national average is 40%. The global average is around 60%. So, you know, we're working in one of the least developed countries in the world. We're working in one of the poorest countries in the world, and yet we've reached a, a contraceptive prevalence rate that's, that's, you know, approaching the global average, which is really, really exciting to be able to do in six years. And what we're seeing mirroring that is that the, is that the birth rate is falling. So the population, the population growth rate, or the birth rate, which is what we use as the marker for, one of the markers for that has fallen by 40%. So we measure what we call the general fertility rate, which is a measure of the number of births per woman per year. And that's fallen by 40%, and which is fantastic. Because, because what that means is that couples are genuinely taking control over their fertility. They're genuinely availing themselves of that service and taking control over their fertility. And we, we think that they're now making reproductive health choices around what their own needs and preferences are. That's the data. But I mean, but going beyond the data, when I go back, I go back every year to see how the project's doing. And although you know, I don't have data to back this up, what I see is that women are healthier. What I see is that children are healthier. What I feel is that women are more empowered. They sound more empowered when I talk to them and listen to them. They're interested in things that they didn't have the energy to be interested in five years ago. So they're interested in natural resource management. They're interested in the octopus fisheries. They're interested in biodiversity conservation and in alternative livelihoods because they can be, because they've got the capacity, the energy and the empowerment to do so. And what we hope and what we think is happening is that this sense of empowerment, this sense of agency and self-efficacy that they experience as a result of having control over their fertility spills over into other parts of their lives. So we hope and think and believe that actually it leads to a sense of broader empowerment over other parts of their life.